Uh, so we have uh, now uh, 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 the uh, talk by uh, Dr. Maitre Kulkarni. And uh, she, uh, as I said yesterday, she will be talking about uh, the uh, geometric uh, side of this uh, uh, subject of cluster algebras. Uh, so you may start. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me to give these lectures. Um, yeah, so um, I will be talking mainly, first lecture is all about examples of cluster algebras that come up in um, geometry, mainly coordinate rings of several spaces. Um, if you don't know what coordinate ring is, I will tell you a little bit about that too. Um, and then, okay, so let me just write the outline here, at least for the first two talks. So first talk is, um, first examples of cluster structure on coordinate rings of some varieties. And then the second talk, um, The second talk, I will talk about cluster structure on on coordinate rings of Grassmannians. So, so by by this notation means coordinate rings on Grassmannians, and um, for okay. So for the third lecture, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I might talk about, this is a possibility, I might talk about categorification of this cluster structure. But as I said, I'm not sure. Um, we will see how today goes. Okay, so I'm going to start at very, very simple. So I'm, I'm going to define um, affine, affine varieties, projective varieties. So if you haven't heard of those, um, I will give definitions. And then some examples, um, as I said, of this cluster structure. Okay, um, so. So first of all, uh, does everyone know, I have heard of a fine variety, a projective variety? Okay, good. So, um, so first of all, a fine space. What is an affine space? So a fine space of dimension n is just C. So this is just n copies of C, right, just Cn. But we are going to write this my field is going to be complex numbers today and tomorrow. So a fine space of dimension n is just c copies of n, but we are going to write them as a n. And this is because we don't want to think about c n as a vector space. We want to think about this as a fine space. So even if it's the same space, we are going to denote it by a n. So it's, it's c n, but we'll write it as a n. And then an affine variety is the set of <coughs> common zeros of polynomials of collection of polynomials. Okay, so we can define some polynomials. Let's say S is the is certain polynomials defined on n variables with coefficients in C. This 
this let s be a set of or a collection of polynomials then the affine variety then i can think about where each of polynomial is zero and then the affine variety is defined as follows defined by s is given by this set we will call v of s is all points in a n such that f of a is zero for all f in s so solutions of all polynomials um, from this set s okay so for example let's consider n cross n matrices over c you can think about you, you can think of the space as a n squared right this what the dimension of the space is n squared so this can be identified with a fine space of n squared and now how is s l n c defined so s l n c is matrices in m and c such that determinant of m is 1 and we know that determinant is a polynomial function so s l n c is an affine variety of the space okay because this is just um, so s l n c is v of determinant minus 1 okay so this is a polynomial function and and solutions of this is s l n c okay So we will see that at least for n equal to 2, I will show you that this variety has a cluster structure, okay? But before that, what is a projective space? So projective space is simply just lines. So um, I'm going to denote them by, denote projective spaces by Pn, so it is set of all lines in a n plus 1 that pass through the origin. Am I writing big enough? Yeah. Okay. Right? So, if you want to think, let's forget about C, if you want to think of R2, then lines, lines passing through origin is, an, uh, is a projective space. So that's, that will be P1 in R2. Okay? So Pn can be thought of as take the affine space, remove the origin, and then quotient by the action of scalars and this action is given by x1 x2 xn plus 1 is identified with lambda x1 lambda xn plus 1 where lambda is a scalar in c star any complex number okay And so, projective variety is the set of common zeros of the homogeneous polynomials.
you know, considering homogeneous because of this quotient, right? You want to make sure that polynomials, when, when you scale by a single scalar, yeah, so scaling by single scalar, uh, you want to make sure that that is okay, and that's why we, we take homogeneous polynomials, right? Okay. Okay. Homogeneous polynomials of a n plus one. Uh, so in n, n variables, yeah, n variables. Okay. So um, I don't know how we feel about coordinate rings, so I'm going to define that too. Um, so co so first of all, coordinate ring on um, affine varieties. So co so these are just functions that we can define on a fine variety, okay? So um, coordinate ring on um, a fine variety. Okay, so these are set of polynomials or yeah, set of polynomial functions on um, on the fine variety. So if variety is is let's say v, then we will denote the coordinate ring by c square bracket v. So again, let's take an example. Um, okay, so suppose I'm, suppose my variety is a parabola. Very easy example. Okay, so let's say y minus x squared. Okay. It's a polynomial in two variables, it defines an affine variety. Okay, now if I want to um, or okay, equal to zero. This is an affine variety in C2. Okay. Um, now to define functions, so what is, a what is the coordinate ring of this parabola? So C of parabola. So these will be polynomial functions on two variables. So C, X, Y, but I want to quotient by this relation, y minus x squared. Okay. So for a simple reason, suppose I want to, suppose I, I take a function f of x, y, let's take it to be the constant function f of x, y equal to 1. Now suppose I take another function, 1 plus y minus x squared. I'm talking about this function on, on the variety. What is it doing? So this is saying that if I define g of x, y to be this function, well, y minus x squared is already zero on the parabola. So these two functions are the same on the, on the variety, okay? So if I take any other multiple of some, m is a bad word, a uh, bad, um, letter, but let's say h of x, y, any other multiple of y, plus, y minus x squared, this is still zero in the variety. So these two functions are still the same, okay? And that's why we want to make sure that we, that we say that this is zero and that's why we mod out by this relation, okay? Okay, so, so usually coordinate ring of, of an affine variety is going to be um, polynomials in those many variables marred by the defining polynomials of a fine variety. Okay. And for, I might not write this, but for projective variety is coordinate ring on projective varieties, polynomial functions get replaced by homogeneous polynomial functions. 
Okay, so because these are defined by homogeneous polynomials, these will be a homogeneous set of uh, polynomial functions, and then the ideal will be uh, ideal of homogeneous polynomials by uh, generated by these defining polynomials. Is this okay so far? Okay, and coordinate rings form a C algebra. Coordinate ring forms a C algebra under usual uh, addition and scalar multiplication. Okay, so now I will talk about, um, as I said, examples of cluster structure on coordinate rings. Okay, first example. As I said, will be, I will show that for n equal to 2, this affine variety has, has a cluster structure. So SL2C, this is defined again by A, B, the two cross, so two cross two matrices such that determinant is 1. So I'm going to write AD minus BC equal to 1 or AD minus BC minus 1 equal to 0. Okay. And as I said, uh, for the coordinate ring, so coordinate ring of SL2C is defined by, so this is, there are four variables, so I will have C, A, B, C, D, but then I have to mod by this relation, so A, D minus B, C minus 1. Okay. And so the claim is that this algebra has a cluster structure. Okay. So, um, any questions so far? Okay. So, by what do I mean? by this. So if I want to have a cluster structure, what do I need? I need a quiver and I need some variables attached to each vertex, right? So that I can mutate and then find more relations, okay? So what I need is I want to find a quiver and variables um, associated to each Vertex. And if I find the right quiver and if I, if I uh, associate the right variables, then I'm going to get this relation, okay? So I claim that my quiver is so my quiver is uh, has three vertices, two of them are frozen, one of them is mutable. This is my quiver that's going to give me the cluster structure. Okay, so these two are frozen vertices, this is a, mute, this is a mutable. Okay, and now how do I um, assign variables? So x1, well, that's not, I'm just going to assign three variables, x1, x2, x3, um, and now let's mutate at 1, 
Okay, let's mutate at, at this vertex. What do I get? One remains the same. I'm only going to change the, uh, what do you say, direction of the arrows, the orientation. There are no, there are no paths going through one, so I don't have to worry about step two and three, right? Is this, do you, does everyone remember? Okay. Now, this is okay, but the interesting thing is here. So how do I mutate the cluster variable? So I have two, so I have two arrows coming in. So from X to an XD, so first, um, first term, first product term is X2 times X3, but there are no out incoming, so there are no outgoing arrows, so the other term is just one, it's an empty product, and then I divide by the original variable, X1. So what, so let's simplify it, so it's saying X1, X1 prime minus X2, XT minus one equal to zero, that's what it's saying, right? So now if I just do the simple, um, thing, let's send to this to A, this to B, this to C, this to D, then this gives me that A, sorry, I did this wrong, A, D minus B, C, sorry, okay, so this gives that A, D minus B, C minus one equal to zero, and this was the relation on, on the coordinate ring, In other words, okay, so, so how do I say this? So this is the relation on the coordinate ring. Okay, so, so, so we say that the quiver, so now I'm going to write A, B, C instead of uh, X1, X2, X3. This quiver with these variables asso associated to the vertices is an initial seed for uh, a cluster structure this coordinate ring. Okay. And just to note here, if I mute it again, at, I can only mute it at one vertex, and if I mute it at one again, I'm going, going to get back to the where that I started with. So this is where it stops, right? Okay, any questions? So we assign a quiver and some variables and that tells us that this coordinate ring has a cluster structure. Right, this means, this is for polynomials in those variables, so yeah, so coefficients come from this. Yeah, so this means coordinate ring and then Any other question? No. <laughs> and that's, um, that gets very hard. You will see in, in the next few examples that there is no such rule. And um, I mean, there's no specific rule for every variety. But people have found rules in small cases. Right? So for Grassmannians, people have found a rule how to find a quiver. But in other varieties, it's it, it's different, and in some varieties, it's not a non not known. Okay, so example two is Grassmannians, um, a specific example of Grassmannians. So I'm going to talk about planes, planes in n plus, c n plus three. Okay, so these are 
two dimensional spaces, so planes in C n plus 3. You will see why I'm writing n plus 3 instead of n. Um, okay, this is Grassmannians are projective variety. So if, yeah. Sorry, can you say that again? So if you, one thing is if you mutate, so you don't want to mutate and create new variables, right? If you mute, so you, you need these variables, you don't, but you don't want to mutate at them because that, uh, that will create more relations and you don't want those relations. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Which is also not clear, but it's clear in this case, but usually it's not clear. Right. Okay, so this is a projective variety. I will, um, I will say more about it tomorrow, and by tomorrow I mean after lunch. Um, so for now, let's just think about um, the coordinate ring of this space. So these are. Um, algebra of, now we are, because this is homogeneous, I need homogeneous polynomial functions. Okay, so instead of writing C gur 2n plus 3, I'm just going to write A. Okay, and A is, I'm just going to rename it, but this is this. Okay, do people know about Plucker coordinates? Uh, that's okay. So this um, algebra is defined by certain coordinates called Plucker coordinates. These are, I'm going to denote them by delta ij. i varies from 1 to n plus 3. And then these are related by some uh, relations. So we have to quotient out by uh, relations called Plucker relations. And those are as follows. So delta i k, delta. I will tell the tell you what these coordinates are, but let me just write the relation first. Delta i j, delta k l, plus delta j k times delta i l. Okay. Um, so what are, so these are called Plucker coordinates. These are functions from Grassmannians to C, so, um, complex numbers, which are, so these are defined as follows. So these are two cross two minors. Of uh, 2 cross n plus 3 matrix. So why 2 cross n plus 3? Because, so I'm talking about two planes in n plus 3. So if I have two columns of n plus 3 length, that's going to give me a subspace of C n plus 3, right? Um, okay, so I'm talking about two rows n plus 3 columns. So. So um, two rows, and I have n plus 3 columns, right? These two rows, these two vectors define a subspace of C n plus 3, which is a point in the Grassmannian. And then what is I and J is doing, I is picking out 
uh, two columns so that you get a two cross two matrix. So these are the two rows that we had, and this is the ith column and jth column. And then if you take determinant of this, which is what minor means, so this is the determinant is delta ij of, let's say, this matrix is m. Okay? So it's just taking two columns here and then finding its determinant. That's what delta ij is doing. And these are, these Plucker coordinates are related by Plucker relations. So delta ij's are related by Plucker relations, which is this. And how do you remember this? This is just something easy to uh, say. So, so write i, j, k, l in clockwise order. Uh, I think Jacob talked about this yesterday, but the, the left-hand side comes from i, k, and j, l, these squiggly lines. This term is, comes from i, j, and k, l, and the second term is um, these two things together, okay? And try to remember this. This will come up uh, at the end of this talk. Um, okay, so the, so the Plucker relations are this. Sorry, is this understandable? I'm drawing all arrows and everything. Um, okay, and because delta ij's have this relation in the coordinate ring, I'm going to quotient out by these relations, right? Just like we did for determinant for SL2C. Okay, now I want to get a cluster structure on, on this coordinate ring, okay? I will give away the um, thing here. So the thing is that Plucker relations are the exchange relations. I will say uh, more about this, um, but this is important. Okay. So how do you get a cluster structure on, on these grass manias? So you start, so first you draw a polynomial. Um, maybe I should write this. So to get Yeah, exchange relations is, I, I will say, yeah, okay, I will say say everything. So, okay, so to get the cl cluster structure, uh, first um, on A, so let's um, draw a polygon, okay, so draw a polygon. with n plus three um, vertices. So I will do an example of n equal to three, so n plus three is six, so six is doable. So polygon, so a hexagon, okay. I'm going to number the vertices from one to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Jacob did a very similar example with Pentagon, but he didn't label the um, edges and everything, so I'm I need labelings for edges too. So the edges are going to be labeled by one, two. This edge is two, three, um, three, four, four, five, five, six, and one, six, and I'm. You should probably guess so, um, by now. I'm drawing this in blue because these are going to be frozen. Now I'm going to triangulate this uh, hexagon. So let's draw, draw triangles. 
I'm just going to choose one triangulation. You can choose any. And then label the diagonals too. So this will be labeled by 1, 5. This will be labeled as 1, 4, just endpoints of the diagonals. And this is 1, 3. Okay. And then you find a quiver from here. Just so, so choose a clockwise, so clockwise or anti-clockwise, whichever direction you like. And then you form a quiver from here. So let me just draw a quiver. Um, I'm not going to draw uh, arrows between frozen. So I'm going to skip this edge, where there is an edge from here to here. And then I don't know if this green color is visible. Is it OK? OK. So. This is one three. Uh, okay, so the vertices, vertices are these edges, the labelings, uh, blue and pink, and edges are given like this. Any questions? Is this okay? Ah, yeah, so frozens are the sides of the polygon. Mutables are the diagonals. Uh, just the endpoints of the segment. Vertices, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I will say this, yeah. Um, okay, so label the vertices of the polygon by... Um, One to n, n, oh, n plus three. Sorry. Um, label the segments joining vertex i and j by i j. I didn't need the brackets. Sorry if, I, if that's confusing. I don't, I don't need the brackets. And xijs, OK, so that's how we get the quiver or, or the labelings so far. And the quiver is, so then we triangulate the polygon. We label the diagonal similarly. by using the endpoints of the diagonal. And then, um, OK, so then, and then we get the quiver using the clockwise or anticlockwise orientation, whichever you like. And then for cluster variables, xij is corresponding to the, uh, or, so cluster variables are xij is the, sorry. So the segment ij um, gets the variable xij. for diagonals. Is this confusing? What I'm trying to say is cluster variables correspond to x12, x23, x34, and so on. Coefficients are so the frozen variables are the um, 
variables corresponding to the sides. Um, this is, okay, you, you don't have to think about this, but if you want to know, clusters are the n-tuples of variables of the triangulation. Okay, any questions? And then mutation is flipping the um, diagonal. So mutation corresponds to okay, and this was described by Jacob yesterday. I will draw this quiver uh, separately here. Um, so the quiver that we get is 1, 6, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 6. So the consecutive ones, so, so the consecutive uh, numbers are the frozen, and then the Inner ones, fifth, one five, one three, and one four, are the mutable, and then I draw the arrows. Uh, okay, this is taking. one is that right now yeah okay so if you so let's think about it don't worry about the okay is there any question no so don't worry about the frozen if you delete all the frozen variables all you have is three mutable uh, variables which is one five one four one three and do you recognize this this from somewhere? This is A3, right? So uh, this is of type A3. And this is not a coincidence. Um, this cluster algebra is of type A3. And for general Grassmannian 2n plus 3, the cluster algebra is of type AN. Okay, so I will write that here. So we did the example n equal to 3, that's why we got A3. But um, so cluster algebra um, is of type AN. And Okay, I should be more precise. This means uh, C GER 2N plus 3 has a cluster structure given by such quivers, and that cluster structure is of type AN. Okay, now if you don't see how um, the exchange relations come into picture, or the Pluca relations come into picture, I will show you very quickly, if I can find the page. Okay, anyway, I wrote this somewhere, I don't, I, I can't find it, but let's, let's just do a small part. So I'm going to, 
mutate at 1, 3. Okay, let's try to mutate at 1, 3. Uh, so I'm just going to draw the part of the quiver that has 1, 3. So I'm going to ignore this, the left part. So let's draw, maybe I can show it to you here. So let's ignore this part of the quiver, okay? So let's just take this part. So when I mutate, so a variable corresponding to 1, 3 is x, 1, 3. So B, and now I'm going to mutate at x13. So the new variable should be x13 prime. I have two arrows coming in from x14 and x23. So the first uh, some first product is x14 times x23. Okay. I have two arrows going out, so the second product is x12 times x34. And then you divide by the original variable x13. So what you get is, okay, so, so let's think about this in, in the triangulation. What we had in triangulation was, I had the diagonal 14, and then I had this diagonal 13. This diagonal was 3, 4. This was 1, 2. Or, no, 2, 3. This was 1, 2. Now I'm mutating at 1, 3. So the new diagonal I get is, okay, so this was, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. The new diagonal I get is 2, 4. Right? I'm just flipping the diagonal. So the new variable, this should be x to 4. Right? So now let's, let's multiply. So what is this saying? This is saying x13 times x to 4 is x14 x23 plus x12 x34. And this is, if you replace x by delta, is exactly the Plucker relation. Okay, in fact, you can see this right here, right? Is the, is the same mnemonic. Um, now, and if you, and these, 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 so the mutations do give you Plucker correlation. Okay. So if you think a little bit more, if, you, if it's not still clear, um, it's easier to think by yourself instead of somebody telling you. But. Any questions so far? I will tell you about it uh, in the next lecture. I'm going to generalize this GER 2N to GER KN, and then you will see. Any other questions? Right, yeah, in, in one seed. Uh, I think, I don't know, I think you can just, how many number, uh, how many Plucker relations? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe we can, yeah, if I think a little bit about this, I can figure it out, yeah. Yeah, so just choose four variables, yeah. Yeah, these should be i less than j less than k less than 4, so that kind of restricts it, and then, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, any other questions? Uh, I have 20 minutes. I can give, I can do one more example. Um, okay. So the third example that I'm going to do is um, big cell of Grassmannian. So 
maybe I will define Grassmannians right now. It, does everybody know definition of Grassmannian or not so familiar? Okay, let's, I'll just write this. Okay. Um, Grassmannians are denoted by GER KN, and by that we mean K dimensional subspaces of CN. Of course, K is less equal N, and both of these are natural numbers. Okay, so an element of the uh, of the Grassmannian K, GER K N will be a K cross N matrix with um, maximal rank okay. um, and because I'm doing K cross N um, spanning vectors are rows. Okay, so rows are spanning vectors. Okay, and then so so two matrices. M and M prime um, give the same um, point in Grassmannian or correspond to same subspace if there exists um, uh, k cross k matrix such that m is equal to or m prime is gm right basically what i'm saying is it, you can do base of change and that shouldn't change the point or the subspace okay so this is just um, did i say base of change i meant change of basis Any questions? This is good? Okay. So these are Grassmannians. And then there is something called big cell of Grassmannian. So I will show, or I will try to show that why these Grassmannians form a projective variety in the next lecture. But um, for now, there is something called big cell of Grassmannian, which is which is the affine part of this big big grass uh, big space so let's see the next example is um, okay so let's take g to be slm c uh, one less equal k less equal n. So I'm going to do something here um, that I will explain why I'm doing. But let's just 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 think about it a little bit. So let's take P. Uh, it's a subgroup of um, S L N C, which is so block matrices. Where this block is zero, these are, this is k, this is size k, this is size l, and so this is k cross l. Okay. And 
And now if you think about the quotient space, so G mod P, this is identified with Grassmannians. Is this okay, or should I say something more about it? Okay, so um, maybe I'll say something um, more. Uh, what is L? Sorry, L is n minus k. Okay. Um, okay. So suppose let, let's take some matrix in in G. Okay, and write it as, uh, first let's take R or K rows, and these are L rows. Suppose, so let's call this K, and let's call this Q N minus K, or QL. Okay. If I multiply, so what is this saying? This, this, this action is just multiply by matrices in P to a matrix in G. Okay, this is just multiplication action. So let's multiply this by one of such matrix on the left to this. So what is going on here? P11, P21, P22. Okay, so this is k cross k, this is l cross l, and this is k cross l. Now multiply by, you, you can do block multiplication. What do we get? This is p11 times rk. This is 0 times ql, so we don't have to worry about it. This is p11 times rk. And the next block is p21 times rk plus p22 times ql. QL. Okay, so I just did simple block multiplication, yeah? But what is this saying? I chose K rows in N, N by N matrix. So this is an element in GER KN, Rasmanians, right? So this, this RK is in GER KN. And then I also said that if there is a G, K cross K matrix, such that this holds, then that shouldn't change the subspace, right? So P11 is a K cross K matrix, so this part is, is also in GER KN, but the same object. It's just base change, right? I don't, I don't care what happens here, okay? What I'm saying is P, this, this P subgroup stabilizes GER KN, right? By, even if I multiply this matrix on the left by this, the first part is still GER KN, yeah? So P stabilizes GER KN. And so if I quotient this, the orbits are GER KN. Left ten minutes. Um, where was it? Now let's take. So this is this 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 is just. I, I was trying to tell you why this is equal to this. Um, now let's take. So what is a big big cell of Grassmannian? So I'm going to define that. So let's take these matrices, this set of matrices, um, such that the blocks are uh, identity matrices. So I K and I L, this is zero, and this is some matrix, some K cross L matrix. Okay. Now there is a projection, there's a projection map phi from G mod P to G. Oh, sorry. OK, 
Okay, so there's a projection map. I want to take uh, image of this map, image of this set under this map. Okay, so um, so first of all, what is this? This is I'm fixing IK and IL. So the only choice I have is Y, which is M, uh, which is this space. So UL is basically M K cross L, right? There is no other, no choice that I can, that, that I have. Uh, other than k cross l, so then the image of u l this map under under the projection uh, phi is called the big cell. And this has, and this big cell has a cluster structure. Okay, I will tell you, um, I will tell you the quiver and the variables that are attached to each vertex. Um, okay, so this, the projection, the projection map phi. induces an isomorphism between these um, matrices and the big cell. So it's enough to uh, give cluster structure to matrices in, in this, which will give uh, cluster structure to the big cell. Okay. Um, so the coordinate ring here on the big cell is the regular functions on the big cell is the algebra of polynomial functions. variables so because I wrote y for for the matrix here I'm going to write y i j for the variables here so i is from 1 to k and j is from 1 to l okay so this is this is just all k cross l matrices. There is no relation on the variable, so there is no relation on the coordinate ring. Okay, so we just want polynomial functions in in the variables y, i, j's. Uh, is there any question? Is, is this okay? Now to give the cluster structure, um, so so the the following quiver. Um, is used so to give cluster structure the quiver that's used is is the following I'm going to write some variables in the quiver and then I will um, explain what those are in in a minute so f11 f12 f1l Uh, these are all frozen. The ones on the left are frozen. So F21, uh, this is FK1, the last one. The arrows are going up. I'm drawing these dotted arrows because they are arrows between frozen. That's, that's the only reason. And then there are arrows going down like these. This is F22. Um, this is F2L. The arrows are going up and then down diagonally. 
So you, you keep doing that until you form a, triang uh, a rectangle. So, so the last one here is FKL. I always keep going up here and then down like this. So this is the quiver. Um, and, and what are FIJs? Okay, so this is, um, I, will I will describe this slowly. So FIJ, so capital FIJ first. This is the largest square submatrix um, matrix of Y, submatrix of Y whose lower left corner is ij. OK, so let's take 3 cross 3. What I'm trying to say is a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, then This is the two oneth entry, okay? So then F, so you want two one to be on the lower left, and then you want square submatrix. So this this is the largest square submatrix. So this is your F21. Okay. Um, and another example, if I want, so let's take F32. So I want the lower left corner to be 3, 2, so this is my F3, 2. Okay? And then Fij, the small, small Fij, is determinant of this, my, this, this 2 cross 2 Fij, or uh, the subsquare matrix. So Fi, small Fij is minus 1 raised to some number, some. Uh, integer that depends on i and j times determinant of fij. Okay. So these are the variables that go on each vertex of this quiver. And of course, I cannot show you that I, I cannot prove that this is this really is the cluster structure on the big cell. But um, you can believe me for, for this one. OK, any questions? Uh, I, have, I have two minutes left. I don't think I can do much. Um, is there anything? This one? Not sure. Is this as varieties? Yeah. It's no. It's not. No. 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 GMRP is not. Yeah. Yeah. No. GMRP is not. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think I'm going to stop here. If you have questions. Thank you, Matri, for that uh, excellent and meticulous talk. Now, are there any questions? Sorry, what did you say? If k equal to 2, what is the cell, the big cell? Right. I, I don't know if it has, does it have a name or something? I don't know. Yes. How is 
So um, what we found, so yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I I think okay. I don't think I sh I will say this, but um, let me think. I think they are of the same type, but so okay. So I will do an example of GER three six and the big cell of GER three six. So the, so. Cluster structure, there is also cluster structure on GER KN, like you normal GER KN. You don't have to say K equal to 2, right? So I will do some examples of GER KN or GER 36. And what you can see is the cluster variables, there are different number of cluster variables. But I think that, yeah, OK. I, I forgot what I was going to say. Big cell is an affine space, yeah, affine variety, yeah. Or no, affine space, yeah. Right, and then this is bigger, I think, because it's an affine space. So you're saying how is this related to the projective? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think he's saying this is an affine space. So there is a cluster structure on affine space usually. So what, how is this related to the cluster structure on Grassmannians? How is the cluster structure on big cells is related to cluster structure on Grassmannians? Variables are creating that affine space. They may not be defined clearly, right? That is why you need to. So the algorithm you are generating, right? That is defined in terms of the if you have an affine space, and you know the what the variables are. In this case, it's a subset of the grass money, right? So you know don't know what the variables are. So the cluster structure. This is why this is not true. Because if you have well defined variables, if you have a started map. You have the variables that are well defined, then you can define the structure in terms of those variables. Here you are taking a subset which happens to be an affine space. So how do you know what the what are the generators of that? Am I correct? If I can do a very tricky question actually, because we give you plenty of cluster structure on the same affine space, and any affine space you see you should have Uh, 